at the School of Success, our 12 students are all on the quest for material success. $100 million, well, why not? And when I get to $5 million, that doesn't mean that I'm going to stop. And the ultimate aim is to head towards a million plus a month. From all walks of life, our students are battling themselves to achieve their dreams. And while you sit there in this show and make gags all the way through, nothing's going to change for you. So cut the gags. That won't be any fun. There won't be any success for you either. Your choice. Dr. Mark Wilson picks out the personality traits that will shape their ride on the road to success. Being obscenely wealthy uh, doesn't, on the face of it, seem rational. Because after you've got so much money, why do you need any more? While multi-million dollar advisor Tony Falkenstein talks strategy. Yeah, I think she's got a lot of fire, a lot of spunk. It's going to be very, very tough for her to get that 200000 Expert motivator John Wall pushes our students to new limits. If you want to be successful, the key is urgency. Urgency, 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 urgency. You do it now. This week, we go undercover to see if luck has anything to do with success. What's she doing? What's she doing? <laughs> I'm on with John. This is just... This is a waste of time. We reveal the number one success personality. Millionaire Bruce has to put his money where his mouth is. Well, go and get the freaking thing. That's the point. Lisa and Joel hit rock bottom. I, I think I just got replaced. And Brian gets a whole lot closer to his dream. When I get into that car, that will be the point that go, that's the end of plan one. It's a common misconception that successful people are born lucky. Well, research actually shows that intellectually open people are more likely to describe themselves as lucky. They are more likely to see opportunities and to take advantage of them. But you can prime your mind to see opportunity. If you think that good things will happen to you, well, in fact, they're more likely to do exactly that. Let's see who in the group are more likely to see the opportunities around them. There's no secret to how science successfully determines who could be open to opportunities or luckier than others. It's a simple case of looking at who scores highest in the psychological profiles in a category called intellectual openness. Now, the seven of you are actually in the top 25% of the New Zealand population for intellectual openness. You are a very open group of people. What about Americans? They don't count. <laughs> You should be creative, artistic, you should enjoy flexibility, you will be happier and in fact happiest when you're working when there are relatively few rules to constrain you. There's a bit of a downside, it might mean that sometimes you get so wrapped up in the fun of thinking and enjoying what you're thinking about that you lose productivity or lose yourself in what you're doing. We've always been very open to new things, trying new things, trying whatever works and uh, it sometimes is our downfall but it always makes it fun. I like looking at new opportunities, doing things differently. I don't particularly like routine. I get bored quite easily of routine. So I'm always looking at new ways of doing things, new challenges. Now, by contrast, that means that you guys, the five of you, are the low openness group. I can actually miss out on things. I think I focus too much on, th might focus a bit too much on detail. So being observant and seeing the broad picture of things, I don't think that's when Alicia would come in and actually probably um, look at the broader picture. I must say, initially, when I was put into that intellectual openness, you know, non-intellectual openness group, I thought, that's not me. I thought, I'm always open, open to ideas. Now, I'd like to pull out Brian. If you could take a couple of steps forward, please, Brian. Now, <laughs> Brian, you actually topped the intellectual openness scale. You scored not only the top out of the 12 people here, but you couldn't have scored any higher on that part of the survey. My mind is opening up more and more, and I'm a lot more of a lateral thinker, so I look for opportunity in all sorts of crazy places. What this says is that you're looking forward to trying to find new ways of doing things that you do in everyday life. And that's what actually makes the things that you do interesting for you. You're very flexible. You can cope when the routine changes. 
like all of us, Brian wasn't born lucky. But we can keep ourselves open to new opportunities and ultimately be able to create our own luck. And I believe that science can prove it. The school of success is a bit of a risk for me because it's an opportunity for me to put my money where my, my discipline is and actually say, OK, here's what the research says about personality and about success. Let's see if we can actually make it happen in a real life example. And that's exactly what we're doing. We've installed a number of hidden cameras in an attempt to observe that luck has very little to do with your success. What I'm hoping to prove is that if you remain intellectually open, you'll see opportunities more readily and be able to act on them to create your own luck. Our participants will be given a piece of paper telling them to follow a simple route to catch a bus. We've loaded their walk with some lucky opportunities, including a $10 note, $8 of gold coins in a phone box, and a wallet with $20. I'm also interested to see if they spot a magazine promotion on success and engage in conversation with three actors we've asked to assist. One actor needs help with a flat tyre, while the other two wait at the bus stop, and all three of them have been given a specific opportunity to discuss with our students should they strike up a meaningful conversation. Time to put my science to the test. First up, low scorers on openness, Johnny and Debs. Well, he missed the money. And they missed a wallet too, didn't they? Yeah, that's right. Are you all right? You OK, Debs? <laughs> you want me to give you a hand? Yeah, do, have you got that? They've become very good at networking all of a sudden. They're definitely learning. They're aware of the situation. Okay. Um, but they are missing a few blatant opportunities on the way through. Now, these guys don't seem to be seeing the money or the wallet. But they are doing the networking, and that's what we've already talked to them about. So what this says is that they're at least learning. Next time they do this type of walk, they're much more likely to see the wallet and the opportunities because their minds will be primed. So, how will our most determined couple fare? I'm hoping for the sake of their business that Nalisha will be more open to opportunities than her husband. Well, that could be the first $10 of his first million that he's just missed. They've walked straight past that wonderful photo of you. I, I'm surprised anyone misses that, to be honest with you. I didn't see any money, <laughs> nothing. Yeah. I didn't even look at the dairy, I just carried on walking. My main focus was probably on this, a the paper. My big concern is that these guys are a couple, so, and they're business partners. So if one of them is missing it, you'd hope the other one would pick up the slack. But they're both doing it. I think in many ways they're just too similar in, in what they're trying to do. And he is just so uh, focused on that, on that end goal of getting, reaching the bus stop. Hey, where does the um, 043 bus go? And, and this is my fear when he goes into business. Same thing. Okay. Be, he's so focused on this one thing that he wants to do, he's not taking advice along the way, he won't see opportunities on the way, he'll just go for it, go for it, go for it. Not a huge fan of the experiment, though, I have to be honest with you. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know whether finding a wallet on the ground when you're walking down a path to catch a bus is, um, is relative to these people looking for opportunities relating to where they want to go in life. Now my guess, based on the profiles, is that we probably expect Brian and Anna actually to outperform the rest of them. And Janek actually would be bottom of my list for a variety of reasons. Yeah, but I'd guess the same thing. They are the most, well, possibly the most intelligent, and so therefore they're going to work out the experiment. They're going to say, hey, what are they going to want here? And they're going to look for the opportunities. I mean, well, I'm on with John. This is just... Much as I would like to think working in a university as I do, that intelligence is the key to success. In fact, just as many very intelligent people are unsuccessful as unintelligent people who are successful. Yeah. It's not just about intelligence, it's also about being able to spot those opportunities. Here's the acid test. Our most open students, Anna and Brian. OK, she's coming up to the money. I really hope yeah, that she's we're, we're all watching, we're all watching. Oh, she's got it. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Good work, Brian. <laughs> Come on, that is an opportunity that he didn't expect to see. I don't know what it is. No, she's walked past the phone box, my friend. Well, what about the wallet? Oh, she's found the wallet as well. Mate, you're on fire. This is a terrific experiment. We own a windscreen and grass business back home. Are you joking? Good work, Brian. Oh my God. Yeah. So we're up I here just, to... Because um... there's road works down the road there, and I just came home on my lunch break. 
the stone hits my windscreen and I'm like, you know, it's hot as hell. And yeah, Chris is the guy that, um, he's my mate, so if you just ring him. The guy well, she is his this is brilliant. He's, uh, he's secured some business. He's found the eight bucks on the phone box. Brian's a smart guy and uh, this has been a, a big win for Brian here. Looking around at opportunity but also seeing uh, what is right there in front of you. The old saying, you don't see the wood for the trees. Well, at the end of Lucky Street, the people who I would have predicted from the profiles, the ones who were top on intellectual openness, were the ones who did best, and that's Anna and Brian. And those who didn't do so well on the profile are also the ones who probably did the worst. But if, if they are able to learn, I think you are able to learn how to be open to opportunities. Mm -hmm. And so I think if that gets reinforced, uh, when they all come together in the schoolroom again, then we've achieved something yeah. by the experiment. Here, 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 here. I totally agree with that. It's a good statement. So, overall, I'm going to take that as a win for science. You feel like the cat who got the cream, don't you, right now? <laughs> <laughs> I've got to take him where I find him. Ah, absolutely. Why not? Coming up, Lisa and Joel get a nasty surprise. They fired me. I'm fired. And John Wall gives our students a reality check. How many hours on here, ladies and gentlemen, are actually committed to building your business? And how many hours are you wasting? lessons learned at the School of Success can be tough to stomach. For our most introverted couple, Janak and Alicia, hearing from Tony that their four-year-old mobile fitness business isn't the idea that will propel them onto the rich list is far from what they came to the school to hear. You guys are passionate, you're focused, you can be super rich. I might be wrong, but it's not going to be personal training. Yeah, Tony's wrong, it's his opinion, so I guess time will tell. Everybody has a different way of their, um, achieving their success, and Tony's what's happened to be um, water bottles and stuff like that. And um, at the end of the day, it is somebody else's opinion. Currently listed at $52 million, Tony's little water cooler business isn't doing too bad. Johnny too is on his way to success, as he's wasted no time in heeding Tony's advice. He sold his prized possession, walked out on his day job, and he's now a stakeholder in his startup recruitment agency with friend and colleague Samara. Tony's unique selling point for them, a money-back guarantee. They were looking at 110% uh, money-back guarantee. Um, just really backing ourselves with regard to the service that, you know, that we're looking at to provide. Across town, Joel and Lisa are desperately trying to crack the New Zealand video production market. But with no major clients yet, their main source of income is Lisa's full-time writing contract with another company. I'm just working. I'm just working like a maniac. I mean, there is just tons and tons and tons and tons of stuff. But their financial situation is about to go from bad to worse. Sweetie. Got what? Sweetie. I, I think I just got replaced. Replaced where? Just listen, as a full-time marketing manager is starting in January, this is the end of the project work for now. If we need additional help they, in the next wait. year, we will give you a call. They, Thanks again for they, all your hard work. They fired me. I'm fired. They said they, they weren't hiring a full-time person. No, that was the whole point. They were they, You're supposed they were to be closing. there for a year. Yes, I was going to be there. I'm there for a year. This is like They're, two months. This is six weeks. This is six weeks. It's Christmas. Well, nobody well, told you about this? No, I was just in the I was just in the lunchroom, you know, and I was just talking about what parts we were gonna finish now and that what I was gonna lay off for a while and show her later so that I didn't overwhelm her she and didn't say anything? No, she didn't say a word. Uh, what do I do? The pressure is now on for Lisa and Joel. Their main source of income has just disappeared. Back at the schoolroom, the pressure is also on. A number of students have big decisions to make, and John Wall wants them all to take a good hard look at the six key people they get their advice from. To step up to the levels of success you aspire to, this next session could make or break your dream. I'm handing out a card for you to start thinking about your successful six people. The people that you think about when you're about to make a big decision. Write their names down for me. So they could be mentors? They could be mentors, they could be spouses, they could be siblings, they could be friends. Here comes the challenging part. I'm going to give you a reference point here. 
you become the average of the six closest influences in your lives. Look at those six people on your list. And I want you to think honestly, honestly with yourself, which of those people on the list are continually dragging you down. They don't encourage you. They're detractors from your success. I want you to grab your pen and I want you to cross them out. Put a line through them. You have your top one, two, three people crossed off your list. It was really hard to cross them off because I, I love them so much. It felt good to cross people off, some of them, some of them very closely related to me, I won't mention names. It's confronting, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Doesn't mean you don't love them, doesn't mean you get rid of them out of your life, but you have to stop those three people affecting every decision that you make. When I thought about it, I think the, because they hinder me is because they don't want to see me hurt or they don't want to see me fail and they want to, to protect me. Now, big fella. You've got number one number two, number four, and number five crossed off the list. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's four of your six people around you that influence you are not helping. Now, let me actually think about the people that were in my inner circle that were governing my aspirations. Last week, we couldn't get you to make a phone call because of the low self-esteem. Yep. Because you've got these four people around you that keep telling you bad things about you, and eventually, you become a product of your environment. Exactly, yep. When I cross these people off, so I did feel that I crossed these people off for a reason. I felt something had lifted off my shoulders. Still reeling from the loss of her job, Lisa has decided to cross herself off her list. I have to put a line right through my name because I'm the person that is, is the person giving me doubt. The most important words you'll ever say are the words that you say to yourself when you're on your own. I know I'm smart, I know I'm talented, I know I can do it, but then I think that other people aren't going to feel that way. On those lists, we have crossed those people's names out. There's some gaps. Now, I want you to start filling those gaps. Joel and Lisa, I want you to find people in this town that have been successful in what you want to succeed in. Debs, you need people in there who have successfully negotiated this quite difficult obstacle course that you've got yourself into. Brand new business, brand new baby. In stark contrast, Brian, Brian isn't about to put strong. anyone new on his list as he crossed no one off. He's already applying the principle of surrounding himself with successful people. The six people that I have already on my success list are local businessmen or my parents. I have some incredible examples in Tauranga of local businessmen who have achieved what I want to achieve. Brian's created a little mastermind list for himself. He knows that he wants to become a successful businessman. That's what he wants to do, and he's doing a bloody good job of it. So what he does is he gets influenced by other successful business people in his town that share the same vision and the same goals. And the good news for Brian is they would know people who Brian doesn't know that might be able to help Brian. Yes, definitely. Definitely. And you get referrals from these people? Constantly. Constantly. This is this process in action. If material success is part of your plan, don't get rid of your friends and family. Just surround your decisions with at least six successful people. For Brian, it could get him a whole lot closer to this $180,000 Aston Martin.